Greetings! Today we will be discussing the evolution of the World Wide Web. Specifically, is the internet alive? So, what is the internet? As we all know, the internet is a vast network of networks, a global communication system. Fundamentally, this discussion centers around how we qualify things as being alive. In general, there are eight criteria by which we can classify something as being alive. Structure and organization. Movement! Responsiveness. Growth. <laughs> Metabolism. Reproduction. So, we started up the Facebook group to look a little bit further into what you thought. One of the responses on our Facebook group stated that in order for something to be alive, it must have a pulse. However, the movement of data across the internet can be likened to the movement of blood throughout the human circulatory system. When we look at metabolism, you could say that the internet draws its fuel from electrical energy. Now people have asked us, how could the internet function with no electricity? The answer is it probably couldn't. However, that doesn't mean it's not alive. Humans could not exist without oxygen. How is that so different? The structure and organization of the human body consists of internal and external elements. Likewise, the structure and organization of the internet consists of internal digital structures and external physical elements. I think we can definitely say that the internet is responsive. We ask it questions and we also have emotional responses to the internet when it cocks you around. As with other living creatures, we form an emotional bond and attachment with the internet. We share with it our deepest secrets and desires. It can be our best friend or our worst enemy. Now homeostasis is an easy one. The internet has lots of associated systems that help regulate and repair damage as required. Now growth is another easy one. Since the internet has grown from a little bitty network way back when to the massive World Wide Web that we know today. Also, you could say that the physicality of the internet has grown with all the new network cables and data hubs springing up all over the world. Interesting. By biological classification, reproduction can only occur when something is born of another living thing. Did we not create the internet? These hands. One of the members of our Facebook group made the point of bacteria. They do reproduce, but they do not grow. And yet we very much classify them as alive. This shows that one does not necessarily need to satisfy all eight of the criteria in order to be classified as alive. Now another group member made the point that the internet is not self-aware and therefore not alive. I disagree. I don't think an ant is self-aware. But they are alive, aren't they? Ants. Our last criteria is adaptation. The coding structures which make up the internet adapt to what data is available via input. The same way that humans have evolved over time based on external influences. Arguably. An animal can only reach what is written in its DNA code. I ask you, how is this so different from the billions of pieces of code that have been written that make up the internet? We are only just starting to realise the implications and the potential of the digital age and this entity that which we call the internet. This is a very subjective discussion very much open to interpretation.
The next time you visit your friend, the internet, ask yourself, how can I deny the status of living to such a complex, ever-changing being? What do you think?